All right there, everyone. The now 7,000 strong migrant caravan is politically destroying the Democrats' election chances. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. In many respects, this is a follow-up video to the one that we did earlier on what's uh, being called the migrant caravan, which is made up of what some now are estimating to be around 7,000 of Honduran Central American nationals who were making their way up to the southern border of the United States. The claim that the so-called uh, mainstream media is making is that these are refugees who are seeking political and economic asylum in the United States, but <laughs> we're finding that there's far more to it than that. They're really ultimately looking for jobs or even trouble, right, given the fact that some of the migrants have in fact admitted that there are criminal elements in their midst, which of course wouldn't take a genius to figure out given the circumstances. Uh, now, President Trump, for his part, is using this caravan crisis as an opportunity to show that he means business in stopping migration invasions into the United States. Last night, he met with military leaders over dinner to discuss proposed procedures for dealing with this migrant invasion. And he has made it clear that they will not be allowed into the United States uh, so that they suddenly become you know, recipients of taxpayer-funded legal processing, much of the time resulting in their prolonged stay within our nation's borders. I think only Democrats should be paying for that. I think that's a good idea. Uh, now, Democrats are approaching this from a very different vantage point. Uh, Democrats are actually attempting to garner sympathy uh, for this migrant caravan. Kamala Harris, the uh, Democratic senator from California, she said uh, that the United States should be welcoming these migrants to our nation's borders, not turning them away. She said that our strength, and th these are her words, our strength has always been that we are a tolerant country, that we are welcoming, in particular, those who have fled harm. And the idea that we're vilifying any one group uh, and the fear monger, that's not in the best interests of our country. Now, these words, I think, deserve a couple of comments here. First, you'll notice that our esteemed senator from California has chosen to show more respect and more esteem and more reverence for these migrants that she, than she did for a Supreme Court nominee. You'll notice that. That's the state of the Democratic Party. Remember, I forget where I saw it. I think it was on um, Reddit. Uh, but someone made the astute observation that Democrats want more background checks on law-abiding gun owners than they do on those in this migrant caravan. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. Democrats are far more concerned about other nations than they are about Americans. And that's, of course, because Americans aren't voting for them anymore. But that's another issue. Secondly, you'll notice how the supposedly objective, impartial, unbiased, mainstream media, you know, the uh, the Don Lemons of CNN who say that they have a point of view, but they don't have a bias, right? Yeah, that mainstream media. Uh, you'll notice they'll never probe Kamala Harris's words that were spoken at a rally for a Democratic candidate that nobody showed up for, of course. They'll never probe her words the way they probe Trump's. So I'm sure many of you heard about Jim Acosta accusing Trump of claiming to be a white nationalist when uh, asking uh, Trump about his uh, declaring himself to be a nationalist at the Texas rally the other night, right? I don't, did you see that? Trump said, I'm a nationalist. I'm not a globalist. We're, of course, say amen here. But CNN's basket case White House correspondent, Jim Acosta, who only has a job because of his infantile antics, they're good for ratings, right? Uh, not because of any noteworthy news reporting. He asked the president if that was a code word for him being a white nationalist. Now, you'll notice they never, ever, ever ask Democrats similar kinds of questions. So when Kamala Harris comes out and says, our strength has always been that we are a tolerant country, we are welcoming, you'll notice the press never, ever asks, whose country are you talking about, Kamala? Are you talking about non-white America? When you say our strength, whose strength, Kamala? the political strength of women and blacks and Hispanics and far-left neo-Marxist whites, is that the strength you're talking about? You'll never, ever 
hear that kind of probing, of course. And you don't hear it because Kamala Harris's cultural Marxism is the assumed default ethical and political paradigm by which the so-called mainstream media asks its questions and analyzes what it considers news. But Kamala Harris isn't alone. Univision anchor Jorge Ramos is pushing the whole these are refugees angle who are seeking asylum, even though he admitted that some of the migrant caravan have been previously deported from the United States. This is their second or third try to get into the country illegally. And the whole these are refugees rhetoric has really been contradicted by interviews with the migrants themselves, the vast majority of which are claiming that they just they want a job. They want to work here. And of course, they don't care if they steal jobs away from American citizens, and they don't care if they lower wages for everyone else. Now, all of this apology for these so-called asylum seekers is not going to work. And that's for a couple of reasons. First, scholars have noted that we are currently living in the midst of what they're calling a post-emotional age. It's a very interesting uh, term and concept. Basically, what a post-emotional age refers to is, well, obviously not that we don't have emotions anymore. Obviously, that's not the case. But rather that we as moderns or even post-moderns, we don't experience our emotions in the same way that we used to. And this largely is the adverse and unintended effects of precisely what the Democrats and the corporatist media are trying to do here with recasting this migrant invasion as refugees seeking asylum. America's Americans get what scholars have observed as a daily diet of phoniness all around us. We get a barrage of emotional manipulation from our media, our commercials, our advertising, our TV sitcoms, our Facebook feeds, and yes, of course, our politicians. And modern people are fully aware precisely why so much melodrama is part of our lives, right? Why do we have so much melodrama around us? We all know the answer to it. It's for the purpose of manipulating us. And more than that, it's for the purpose of manipulating us in such a way that enriches corporate executives and empowers politicians. So this is another way of saying that modern populations are attuned to the fact that these emotive appeals are inherently artificial. They're not real. The voiceover for the movie trailer, the weeping news anchor, the little kitten memes shared on social media, the excited pitch man for commercialized products, we know they're all fake. Uh, the, these emotions are manufactured for corporatist purposes and we're not buying them. And so in this post-emotional context, how effective do you think all the crocodile tears for these caravan migrants, for these supposed refugees are going to be? Again, the Democrats are still living in the 1990s. They haven't figured out, like Trump has, by the way, that we are in the midst of a paradigm shift away from secular globalization towards a nationalist populist ethos, which is increasingly none to and indeed suspicious to any attempts to manipulate them by over-the-top melodramas that are little more than sanctimonious lectures on what compassion really is all about and always involves their hand in our wallets. And so given the fact that we are in a post-emotional period or age, the default way the vast majority of the American population is going to interpret this migrant caravan is through the prism of what we call here on this channel border insecurity. Because globalism entails transnational economic and political dynamics, Globalism tends to render national borders obsolete, particularly evidenced in this mass migration. And so there's a reason why 2016 has been called the year of the wall. And it's been called the year of the wall because everywhere we look, nations are tightening borders. Hungary, India, France, Austria, Italy, Greece, Israel, you can go on and on and on. Everywhere we look, border walls are going up. They are not coming down. And these these are thoroughly nationalist populist walls that seek to protect a nation's culture, religion, tradition, language, land, culture from the anti-cultural dynamics of globalization. And so the political language and policies that explicitly seek to protect national interests and identities are now increasingly the new norm. This is why Trump identifying himself as a nationalist and Kamala Harris identifying herself as a pro-migration invasion globalist means Trump wins and Harris loses. Harris is speaking a language from the 1990s, or perhaps even the 1960s, the civil rights-based tolerance, 
uh, you know, multicultural language that developed from the increasing influence of globalism, but before mass populations began to see globalism's devastating anti-cultural, anti-national effects. This is why more and more people are siding with Trump and less and less people are siding with the Democrats. The Democrats are using outdated playbooks that don't take into consideration the post-emotional nationalist populist age that has emerged of late. And so with this uh, migrant caravan approaching our southern border, uh, we can be sure that the Democrats' response to this caravan, that uh, both their active and passive actions have actually helped form, is only going to further debilitate them politically in an ever-rising new conservative age. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on that Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish.